You know, we were going to things like Longstock, which was the displaced Stonehenge, as we got the uh, sound system up and running, so travellers would begin to sort of appear out of the woodwork. Yeah, it just happened slowly, you know. I remember going to one festival and you could hear boo, boo, I didn't boo, like it, boo. Yeah, I was not too... I was, Hit me up. I was needed to be convinced. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like this, but yeah. But then, yeah, you, but then you know, suddenly, suddenly you see all the old guard listening to rave music, you know. It was just one of them moments of harmony where everyone just... You know, tr- you know, crusty travellers, you know, were, were, were putting on trainers and jumpsuits and, you know, and baggy clothes. And it was a beautiful moment. It was, you know, it, it had the power of, of, you know, the original summer of love. But I remember going to one of these kind of parts, about 30 miles away from Stonehenge in the end. On the edge, there was the sort of start of, of what became the Spiral Tribe, you know, just sort of like setting up a, a sound system next to what was a sort of travellers festival the travellers liked it the, you know the sort of new blood people the people into the dance music liked it and it was all sort of working like a nice little little thing you know the whole point was it came together we at that point were bringing the music and the system they were providing the location and some other things so you know it was a joint venture And it was this coming together of two outlaw gangs that briefly reignited and reimagined the free festival scene in Britain. Well, the whole free festival and free party scene grew and grew and grew and grew. So you got to Castle Morton, where it's what, 60 to 80 to 100,000? This impromptu festival at Castle Morton, Worcestershire in 1992 reached an unprecedented scale through word of mouth alone. It was the pinnacle of the new underground and put the wind up the government all over again. So you had loads of vehicles everywhere. You had the double-deckers, you had your techno traveller types, you know, your zippy ravers, your crusties with dogs, your straight-up ravers, you know, with, like, beanies and caps. So you had, like, everyone there and everyone was mingling. The party just went straight through, so it started Friday all day, Saturday all day, Sunday to Monday and Tuesday. And there was like a naked man running around, obviously, by Monday morning. There's bound to be a couple, aren't there, here and there. A friend of mine said it's the Woodstock of our generation. I think she was probably right. Scared the crap out of the government, you know, like, because suddenly they could, what could they do? You know what I mean? There wasn't a police force in the country that could deal with, like, 40,000 people arriving on a place. The Castle Morton thing was the straw that broke the camel's back. I mean, I don't know how long, how many days did they go on? It was almost like sports coverage on the news. They kept saying, and another day at Castle Morton. A week ago, the 20,000 travellers had sprawled all over the common at an illegal music festival, with beat music pounding out from numerous discos day and night. Why is it on Friday night we had a man wielding a machete in our orchard, chasing our lamb, shouting meat? The police came down on them like a ton of bricks, and that was sort of the end. That was the start of the criminal justice bill, really, wasn't it? This summer at Castle Morton and other places saw outrageous and unacceptable examples of the problems caused by New Age travellers and ravers. There will be no soft option under the Criminal Justice Act. Celebrate our multicultural society to celebrate our right to prison.